good. Thanks for having me, dude. I appreciate this you coming through. my first podcast. Hell yeah, so, dude. I'm like trying to like keep it yeah. regular. Yeah, it's weird. It's uh, It'll be five or ten minutes of us like pretending we're not on camera and then eventually we'll not we'll, be on camera and we'll just yeah, be hanging yeah, yeah. out and chilling. Facts, um, dude. Hell yeah. Dude, before we get into it, I'm like so wired from last night. I was at UConn for a show. I was working. Uh, it was Trippy Red. Oh at Gamble Pavilion god. last night. Oh my god! And of course, UConn won the the national title yeah, a couple yeah. days ago. So, so it was just probably pandemonium last night. Pandemonium, pandemonium, absolute mayhem. Uh, halfway through direct support, the show stops because there's some like fuck up with security, and the whole like upper deck clears. And I turn around, I'm like, Yo, what is like? Why is the stadium clearing out? No idea what happened, but everyone just floods the floor. And so they have to turn the lights on in the middle of the direct support, like, Hey, That's- go back to your seats. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> craziness. And then Trippy Red comes out, and he just felt like like a character of a human. Yeah. Like normally, I feel like I see artists, and I'm like, oh, you're human. Like, I, yeah, yeah. And he, it was just like, Unreal. it was wild. What did yeah. you do last night there? I was doing video for him. I work for like a production company oh, that does like fall. Yeah, it does a lot of concerts for colleges. Yep. Um, so it's fun. It's cool. Uh, and yeah, being in the sold out Gamble Pavilion was just that's wild. probably crazy. And Trippy Red, he's just obviously fucking massive. Wild. So. Yeah. And then I didn't realize how big he was. It was one of those artists where really? like, I heard the name and it's like I knew I knew him. Oh yeah. And then he gets there and I start hearing the songs. I'm like, ah, I know that Dude, one. There's a lot he- and then the next one it's like, oh yep, got yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like obviously that's not like the first thing yeah. I choose to listen to, but I just by chance like know a lot of Trippy Red. Yeah. And yeah, he's fucking massive. It was wild. And then the basketball team was there, and like it was the first time I saw a college. I went to UConn for a little bit, and so yep. like I I'm used to seeing them on campus. But it was the first time I saw him, and I was like, oh, you're 19 years old. Like, you're really <laughs> struggling. Like, they were kids, and they're all fucking monsters. And, of course, in this intermission when there's security, everyone floods the floor, which is also where the basketball team is. So yep. just like an impromptu meet and greet in the middle of a Trippy Red concert for That's them for like wild. half an hour. And it was just crazy. It's like, yeah, they're just college kids. I don't know. Yeah. It's so weird to be like, oh, fuck. You. I know. How old are you? I'm 26. Okay. I'm 27. So I turned 31 this year. And like yeah. for the first time in my life, like the past like year or two years, yeah. like, yeah, I'll see college kids and I'm like, whoa, they're yeah. like young, dude. That's like, yeah, it, you know, I don't know. When you're younger, you don't think you'll get to that point. Like yeah. everyone feels the same age. But yeah, yeah, yeah. now I just like, I'm finally like realizing like, wow, yep. I like don't know what they're saying and shit. I, I finally old. like, yeah, when I'm on college campus, I see college students. I'm like, oh, you're young. But when I see the athletes on TV, they're still old. Yeah, to yeah. Somehow. Oh, completely agree. <laughs> and then to see them just like. Yeah, no, they're, dude. Some some of those kids are like eighteen years old. And stuff. Yeah, it's fucking yeah. wild. Yeah, and it's a trippy red concert, so they're all in their, their bucket hats and their yep. swag and their Balenciaga. And yeah, it's like, where did dude. you get Balenciaga money from? <laughs> right? Division one, you that's, got that's like normal now. But, yeah, it's like it's fucking crazy. Yeah, it was. That's one of the things that makes me feel like old. I'm yeah. like, yeah, like everyone's like fucking dressed to the nines. Yeah, like where do you get this fucking money? You're yeah. a college kid. Yep, that's just how it is, though. It's yeah, it was wild, but yeah. So I'm like. Shifting gears from that to here and to talk about like metalcore, yeah. deathcore, beat down, and all the fun stuff. Uh, but Thanks yeah. for having me this early because I like, appreciate. I, if I had known that, I would have been like, "Oh, we can push it even." No, dude, I appreciate you coming through yeah, and making yeah. it work. Hell and yeah. I got to drive to get out here. Um, but yeah, I had to get that out of my out of my brain because yeah. it has been quite a twenty four hours. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I feel like you just be wired from that. Did yeah. you even sleep last night? What time did yeah. you get home? Yeah, it was it was fine. I was home by like one or two. Oh, that's not bad. Uh, so that's yeah, it wasn't too bad. How far is that from here? I don't even know. An hour, 45 minutes. Oh, that's not so bad. yeah, it wasn't bad at all. Yeah. It was right up the road. Um, but yeah, wild times. Maddie, I appreciate you making the hike out here. So Thanks, episode 15 dude. something from everyone. Hell yeah. Uh, I started the podcast. As, 15, that's crazy. Yeah, it's been Already? going. It's been going. That's wild. Yeah, I'm determined. 20 is like my big milestone. Hell yeah. 20, I've got some different set ideas I want to do. Oh, Mic dope. upgrades to the first ones. Hell I'll get yeah. done. These are actually Amazon basic mics. Really? And they work. They've gotten the job done. They sound like, good. When I was listening, yeah. when I listened to the one Kevin did, it I sounded great, yeah. dude. I, yeah, I appreciate that. I'm shocked with how well they've worked for fucking $30, $40 mics or whatever they yeah, are. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> but yeah. I wouldn't have guessed that. For sure. Yeah, that's one of my favorite secrets that I've kept. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that'll be one thing I upgrade. And then, I don't know. The set's always been changing. I think this is the first time I haven't like updated the set between episodes. It's always been like something little, little changing different. or yeah, like yeah. adjusting lights. And this is the first time where it's like, I think, I think we got one. Yeah, no, this <laughs> I think we got great, one. Dude. Uh, so I appreciate you coming out, my man. Thanks I wanted to here. get right into the Euclid stuff. Absolutely. Uh, so we hung out last week. We had the first show. Yes. Uh, what was that like? I mean, dude, I feel like being on stage after, yeah, a couple years. It's five of and a half years, dude. Five and a half. Fuck. That came up like two or three days before we went on stage because I was thinking about it. And it feels, it doesn't feel like that long. Yeah. Like at all. Yeah. And... I was thinking about it, and it was, yeah, November 2017 was the last show, so I was 
basic Damn. math. That's like five and a half years ago. And I was like, that's fucking crazy. It's like two music years, but yeah, five yeah, real yeah, life years. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it, it, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it doesn't feel that long because we did, we really didn't stop. A lot of people mm -hmm. I feel like don't know that. Yeah. Is we kind of, we took like a little bit of time off mm -hmm. just to figure out like what was going on. Yeah. I mean, in depths and ties, we just wanted to put it to rest with yeah. like all, it was just done. We're beating a dead horse at that point. Yeah. That's all how we all felt. How long this. was that alive for? Uh, I feel like by the time I met you, it has already been around. Yeah, it was yeah. seven years. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Technically, it started in like 2010. Okay. And that was a whole different lineup. That's yeah. the only original members were me and Boomer. Okay. We were the only two people that were. So you guys did start end. that back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. You and Boomer like high school friends. Are you guys boys from back in the day. Kind of. Yeah. I just went to shows back in the day, and he was in this band. This this essentially kind of bigger band. Mm -hmm. They're called 40 SLS, which they were a bigger band, mm -hmm. and. I just was going to shows. I used to take pictures at shows, and I met oh, a lot. Yeah. Of, I met a lot of bands know. that cool. way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I took promos for uh, the band he was in after that. This band called Chords. Okay. And we just kind of hit it off, and we found out that he lived in the town over from me, and we just kind of hit it off. But That's I funny. didn't like go to high school with him or anything. He's a few years older than me, so we like never. If it wasn't for shows, I honestly would have never met him, which is fucking crazy. That's cool. Yeah. But yeah, he's a great guitar player, and I kind of. His band that he was in had kind of fizzled out, and I wanted to like write similar stuff. And I was like, "Yo, we should." You're he he still is way better than me, and he. Everyone in their band says about everyone else in their band. I know, I know, but that's how I, I mean. That's how I feel. <laughs> yeah. well, all the Which worst. is the right self, way to be. Yeah, yeah. be pretty fucked up. If you're like, like, dude, everyone sucks except for me. <laughs> yeah, dude, and I'm just like a self-critical <laughs> yeah. motherfucker, dude. Sure. So, yeah. uh, and like playing with him was like crazy because I looked up to him forever. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Just even taking pictures, I was always like the kid who wasn't in bands mm -hmm. doing that kind of stuff, even though I had like products here and there. But um, yeah, we started in like 2010 and yeah, we went to 2017. So mm -hmm. like that was a huge gap, but because we'd been so active from 2017, like I said, we took a few months off, mm -hmm. but we had f a full blown album ready to go for In Depths and Tides that ended up being Euclid. Okay. And yeah, it was fucking crazy being yeah. on that stage again it felt great i mean kevin also kevin's a little bit longer i think kevin's like a little over six years was the last time he played yeah because construct ended before in depths and yeah. tides did so that was yeah that was wild we knew the show was going to be sick but like we just didn't know how sick you know what i mean definitely yeah we go on to obviously manage our expectations it's our first show like <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're not we're as much as we don't think we're a new band we are you yeah. know what i mean like to most people yeah. they had never heard us before yeah or even seen our name anywhere or anything yeah. like that you're opening a show there's always a, the chance yeah. the doors are late and someone's fucked up or there's a meet and greet by accident or something yeah, yeah, yeah. Like anything can happen even that, that like away by accident like we all post about the band and stuff like yeah. that but realistically it's just our close friends even yeah. or you know extended friend group that knows yeah. about us yeah we don't have real fans yet you yeah. know what i mean well i mean now we do but sure. we, we didn't we were at least i didn't feel that we had yeah. True fans until we start gigging. That's when yeah. you make new fans. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it was. People's brains. Get on that stage was fucking amazing. And it exceeded all expectations. Hell yeah. It was fucking great. We sounded good. It felt it, good. Yeah. So. What, uh, had, you've played the Webster before, right? Like oh, a bunch of that times. Stage. Yep. Is that, uh, it is such a small, tight stage. Like, yeah. I know you guys are a big <laughs> group of people. Yeah, we are. Physically. Dude. Like, what is it, what is it like being on that stage in that room? I mean, I'm trying to, yeah, what is getting in your head in that moment where it's like, fuck we're we're here we're doing the thing yeah it's dude it's incredible i think the webster's cool because which is something i kind of like i obviously have aspirations to play sicker bigger venues i want to play music halls and theaters like mm -hmm. that's where i want to be at the of main course. Stage. who, who yeah, doesn't yeah who yeah. doesn't but um i love the tight intimate sold out pack shows because mm -hmm. it's like guaranteed to pop off you know, if there's really, if, if one person starts the vibe in the room or even yeah. the band, you know, someone doesn't even have to move in the crowd, but if the room's packed, like it always works. Especially in heavy. Yeah. yeah especially, especially yeah. with like a, a show like that where it's just all fucking yeah. heavy ass death court, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So that was like, that was the coolest part is knowing that even if it goes bad, it's still going to be a sick show. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's, we manage our expectations, but we knew it was going to be sick, like baseline level fucking sick. Yeah. And we played the Webster a thousand times, yeah. honestly, at this point and. I've played some shows where it felt more packed, but luckily every other band besides us was going direct. Mm -hmm. So everything was just like super tight and, oh, and like yeah. tucked off the sides on stage. We still had like not as much room as I obviously would like, but yeah. dude, on a fucking four band package and they all backline, it's, you, you can only get what you get. But That's interesting was, that as bands start, yeah, 
going di more is that the right term yeah yeah di and not have the back line that yeah it makes that stage a lot more friendly whereas 10 years ago that show would have been a disaster for you guys to open dude i'll never forget we played with like i think it was carnifex lorna shore maybe rings of saturn okay there and that show because Carnifex at that time, and they still are obviously massive, but at that time they had like just released a new record and they had like the most intense stage setup, like okay. with backdrops and lighting. What, like and year-ish are we? 2016 okay. maybe. Um, and that show, they had every, every band had everything backline except for drums, but Carnifex did keep their drums up there. So gotcha. the, I was standing when Tanner was in the band. Mm-hmm. Dude, his drum set was literally directly to my right, dude. Like... Damn. Jay, I yeah. think Ben may it might have been Ben or Jake had just freshly joined the band, mm-hmm. but he straight up was on the other side of Tanner. Like Tanner was at the front of the stage. Damn. And that was bad. Yeah. I can handle like cabs and stuff being backline, because that's fine. Like it's that's not big of a deal. Yeah. If I don't have much room to like go back and forth, that's fine. But literally being in like a one by one foot like yeah. area was rough. And like cabs aren't gonna hurt you. Like a drum yeah. set's gonna fuck you up or yeah. you're gonna fuck him up. Either exactly. One. Yeah, yeah. One yeah. yeah. So so like yeah, knocking shit over. Like yeah. I can't knock over a fucking guitar cab. Yeah. So anything ever since then, anything is better than that. That's funny. Yeah. So even though like it was semi packed on stage, like a small stage like we talked about, but it wasn't that bad. It's funny. I have the same feeling with photo of like I've shot there so many times mm. that it's like I'll shoot any venue ever because I've figured out how to work in this like Dude, little one by one thing. I couldn't imagine and doing that. It's like yeah, I go to some of these like. Yeah, at these arena shows now. We're talking about the Trippy Red show. Yeah. And there was an issue last year with security where the photo pit got flooded and I couldn't get access to it. And it was one of those like, oh, that's cool. I've made the Webster work. Like, this is still a sold out arena. Yeah, I don't need yeah. a photo pit to figure this out. Yeah, like, yeah. We can make this happen. Yeah. And like, once uh, again, at a fucking crazy at desk core show, like, yeah. having, a, having a fucking camera yeah. like up in front like that is yeah. just. People are surprisingly respectful. Yeah, yeah. Be like, well, you'd hope so. <laughs> you'd hope so. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, well, you don't never know like when the stray fist is coming or like, yeah, yeah. like crowd surfers always make me nervous because yep. I don't see them. Like of course. everything else I can, at the Webster especially, I feel like I can like feel the floor shake when yeah, the, the pit yeah. opens up and I'm like, oh, I got to move. Yeah, like, I don't yeah. know what's behind me, but I know something is and I don't want to be my back to it. Yes, yes. Um, but yeah, people are generally respectful of cameras. It's just, yeah, it's crowd surfers and stage drivers are the other one because there's fucking limbs that end up going everywhere that aren't planned yep um and yeah those are the two that get i say i feel like that's a little bit less control via the people yeah when you're crowd surfing you're at the whim of the people throwing yeah. you around yeah yeah so uh yeah and it with barricades is even messier sometimes because security is like yeah they're doing their thing so there's like us working this way and security's working this way and yeah. we're kind of cro- yeah so we're both in each other's way and their job takes priority but we have a big ego <laughs> so <Actually. laughs> Hey, uh, you're providing but, content yeah. for everybody. It's a weird, like, yeah. And I, I had this conversation with Sarah when she was here. Like, we're not rocket scientists. Yeah. But, like, we are doing this important stuff of documenting stuff. And also, like, your record sells your sells your tickets. Yeah. But so does your social media. And your social oh, media only works with us. Absolutely. And in the same sense where it's like, yeah, your band exists without me 100%. Yeah. There is, uh, or, yeah, content yeah. creators, whether it's me yeah, or someone yeah. else. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, there is something invaluable there of like. Oh, absolutely. Well, especially nowadays. Yeah. Too like, I mean, you filmed our fucking live set. Yeah. Which is, I mean, obviously nobody knows that yet, but you filmed our live <laughs> it's set. Top secret. Yeah, you filmed our live set, and it's like one of those things where we all we talked about that months and months ago. Like, we should have somebody yeah. or someone do some sort of like even just film sections and make like a like kind of like a show recap video, yeah. and then yeah. Kevin was like, "Yo, we should ask Peter to just film the live set." And I was like, oh, Vinny always records, so it's Hell perfect. Yeah. It, it's yeah. like it works seamlessly. Yeah. And it's one of those things where I feel like that's like the standard for for bigger bands. We're trying to present ourselves in a way that yeah. we seem like, you know, we have the funding from either management or label or something, yeah. which is obviously incredibly hard to do yourself. But yeah. you got to get as close to that as possible because yeah. your music is first and foremost, of course. But if you don't have the things to, to back it up, you know, if you don't have – if you write a sick album and then you never post – the album art mm-hmm. or a photo from a show yeah. to follow it up or anything like that. Like yeah. you're just shooting yourself in the foot. There's this there's unfortunately so much music out there. Like there's you need something like to accomplish. Artist it. belief of like, I want to be a purist. I want to just put the thing out and people will consume it and come back to me and the yep. world will even out. And it's like, I'm slow. I'm still accepting that like, that's not the case. And even all, like dude. in the context of the podcast, I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to keep pushing and hopefully yeah, something. Yeah. But it's like, no, you're right. At some point there is a, yeah, you gotta do the legwork. You have to. Back dude. In. It's just people's attention um, span is just yeah, 
down the drain in my opinion now. Yeah. So yeah. I'm honestly, I mean, I'm bad with that too. I have to find myself like, no, you should like pay attention to, to the s- mm-hmm. song or video or yeah. I have, I'm like the worst music listener and stuff like that. So I like listen to like the same shit over and over. Yeah. It's bad. It's wicked bad. In the uh, context of the live show uh, at the Webster, did anything go wrong that I wouldn't have known from like being off stage? Was there a yes te- technical mishaps of some sort? I think the only technical mishap was uh, Boomer's Wireless cut okay. in and out like a couple times. Okay. Uh, notably, realistically, only in Human Pathogen, which was the second song we played. Mm-hmm. That was probably the only thing. But it's one of those things where you can't tell and we all like spent like the next day like being so critical Mm -hmm. and then we get like the video back or like we see the videos that people post on instagram Mm -hmm. we're like it doesn't fucking matter dude yeah it's like a split second thing like it's like only we notice so it just sticks out to us like a sore yeah. thumb you know what I mean? it's yeah. it's it's crazy especially no one's even heard the song yet. i mean you exactly songs that's, what, that's, that's another thing is yeah. that like we're super critical and we can only get better from here but we also are a brand new band mm-hmm. that's what, what going back to what we said we were managing our expectations like it's our yeah. first show like yeah. shit isn't going to be perfect no yeah. matter how much we practice we've never moved all the gear from our practice space mm-hmm. to a venue reset it all up ever that's yeah. technically the first time we've done that yeah. we've done it as people yeah but everything changes every mm-hmm. time you move everything everything changes yeah, yeah. so yeah. Yeah, I don't that, envy that at all. Yeah. I have some version of that with video gear, but even then, like, it's much more contained. Drum sets to me are the, just the biggest oh, nightmare in the world. Dude, I want nothing to do with them. Dude, um, I'm yeah. a drummer in my other band, and playing guitar at this one was, mm-hmm. like, a breath of fucking <laughs> fresh air for me, dude. It was, yeah. it was fuck. I was like, this is all I have to do. I'm done. I'm setting up. I'm, like, helping Matt. It's, like, so much shit. Or, like, yeah. bring it on the stage, dude. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. What's uh, in Boomer's in-ears? Or I guess what's in – do you all have in-ears? No, I wish. Okay. So it's just Boomer, and I assume Matt obviously has one. Uh, uh, Matt, no. So his wireless for his guitar. Oh, gotcha. That's what was cutting out. Gotcha. Yeah, no, only Matt rocks in ears. Gotcha. We want to get on an in ear rig. Yeah. But it was just something out the gate where it was so like, expensive, yes. Right? Well, it's not ex- as expensive as I expected okay. it to be. Um, but it was just uh, an expense that we just we couldn't swing before the show. Yeah. We obviously would rather have merch and yeah. you know videos and make sure the album album art's done, the album's done, all that gotcha. shit. Yeah. Um, that is absolutely the next move. Um, but yeah, just Matt runs in ears. That's just for he has guitars and click in his ears. In a perfect world, what would be in your in ears? Ooh. Honestly, because of what you can do with like the X thirty two app and shit, I would just have a sweet ass mix where it's obviously I you I can hear myself above everyone, but I would want to hear everybody. I'd want to hear drums, I'd want to hear bass, I'd want to hear boomers guitar on the other side. Mm-hmm. And I would try to have my mix just sound like as close to a recording as possible. Interesting. You know, me set mostly hard panned on one side, Boomer mostly hard panned on the other. Yeah. You know, that's what I would do. I'd want it, you know. Do you want to click in there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm, like, so ready for is to have click. Because mm-hmm. especially from recording myself at home and stuff like that, like, having click is insane. Like, obviously, we did great and we've done great. Mm-hmm. I've never had click live ever. Okay. So it's not something I could... Uh, or I, I, you know, need, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. But it would definitely be fucking awesome to have click in my yeah. ear. I feel like there's that movement in like hardcore or like the, like, yeah, the beat down kind of band mm-hmm. of like, yeah, you play without the click so you can extend the breakdown. And kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. But with you guys, with Matt blast beating his whole fucking yeah, balls dude. off back there, like there's no time for so you know changing what, stuff or letting stuff breathe. So like, you know what's sick is clockwork. I would, I'd be down to like, essentially automate and program that stuff into mm-hmm. our set though if we want to make something slower or make something slightly different mm-hmm. like i'm all for humanizing that I think but sick. you can still do it with the click like people interesting i don't know people are like so afraid of that kind of stuff yeah. but i have no problem doing that i think click is like super necessary nine times out of ten especially if you have auxiliary guitars going on or there's keys or something like that gotcha. just yeah, because yeah, yeah yeah well obviously for backtracks but even if you don't like i think click is just sick to have Gotcha. It's just guaranteed tightness. And if you want to slow a part down, just fucking make the click slow down. Gotcha. And I don't know why. There's a lot of people that I feel like that are afraid about that. Like, for some reason, they're like, I don't want to, you know, click will be rigid. We can't, like, slow down parts or That's feel the crowd heard, or feel yeah. the crowd. And it's like, make that part of the song. Like, in Shape, there are, like, between songs. Like, there's mm-hmm. certain songs where, even in the Euclid set, where there's, like, longer gaps and way shorter gaps. Mm-hmm. It's because we want to, you know, we want to create, like, that sense of urgency going to other songs. But mm-hmm. We also like the the crowd to like relax during parts. Yeah. So we like, we time it, you know, we've practiced a bunch. We make sure Kevin says what he's supposed to say during the parts. 
it's like almost choreographed, which some people are, I feel like are against, but you can still have that kind of human ass human esque part. Yeah. While keeping it. I also think you, it makes sense to choreograph it until it doesn't need to be choreographed. Yeah. Like, yeah, I think yeah. The opposite way is dumb of like, yeah, being afraid and being rigid and for you guys. It's like, yeah, maybe it's a little bit cookie cutter or rinse and repeat, but yeah, it's yeah. like, it's going to be clean. It's going to be professional. And as yeah. we keep doing this, it'll become more natural. And Kevin's thing will be, yeah, more fluid and more natural and more in Kevin's voice and whatever. The yeah, absolutely. Like, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It all works better. And I just, I mean, as long as we play good and bring enough energy, the crowd's going to react the same way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, the other thing too is like, I try to write songs to have those kind of parts for us to be able to breathe and have buildups yep. and have kind of dynamic range in our s- songs. So like, we don't have to like worry about like, like, oh, we should make this part longer live so the kids can get high. It's like, no, like, let's just write it into the song that way. Yeah. That's interesting. I've never heard someone talk. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a musician, so it's fun to pick your guys' brains. Yeah, like, yeah, What is happening in there? And I have heard people talk frequently about, yeah, ditching the click so it can be more organic. And I've never heard someone say, no, you build the organic organism. I don't know yeah, what the word is. Yeah, there. build the, yeah. Feel it out. Try shit. Into the click. Yeah. I bring my whole fucking, I, you know, I bring my whole computer to practice. Mm-hmm. So we have full control over anything. If someone's like, you know, the, you know, we don't have enough time between those two songs. Like I need a breather or whatever. I'll make it longer and mm-hmm. I'll do whatever that has to be done, but. We try it out. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You got to try stuff first. Interesting. Yeah. Um, interesting. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, what's like the, on tech mishaps, is there one that stands out, not necessarily to relate to that show, but yeah, one yeah. that stands out as like the holy grail of all your tech mishaps? Oh. As, uh, as I was thinking of this last night, I had one that came to mind. So if you need a second, I'm happy dude, to. So I, I didn't know for the longest time. I used to run Axe Effects with a okay. Mesa tube power amp. So a lot of the times, so like a tube amp, it obviously uses tubes. There's solid state power amps that can be used too. Um, but I wanted to use tube just to get as close to like a tube amp as I could while still having a digital unit. You know sure. what I mean? Um, and this is, you know, six years ago now where I had definitely significant less gear knowledge. And I didn't know that it has technically two channels. Okay. And I thought that like, I could all, like, I'm just using one cab. So I would just plug one cab into one side but I didn't realize that like the other side was completely active the whole time, which the way those things work is something has to be plugged into there. Mm-hmm. So if anything ever happened, the energy from the power tubes can leave the, okay. the amplifier and go into the cab and either pop a fuse or whatever. But if it doesn't, it'll come right back into the power amp okay. and fuck shit up, essentially. That's how that works. Gotcha. And I never, ever did that one time. And it would literally shut off <laughs> mid-set and turn back on like all the fucking time. And to the point where it would like turn off and turn back on, turn off, turn back on. And that happened like a bunch of times at the end of In Depths and Tides. And oh, I could man. never figure it out. And I ended up selling it because I would just like, we weren't playing live. Yeah, I was doing mostly recording at home. I personally like two amps better. I don't really need that many tones. Okay. So I just rock a tube amp now. Um, but that was probably the biggest mishap. Hell like yeah. wireless is dropping out as like normal as fuck. Yeah. I'm sadly wicked used to that. Yeah. Um, which is one of the reasons why I upgraded my wireless because I had line six for so long and I would get dropouts 24 seven. Yep. I'm terrified of anything wireless. I like everything oh. in my life is wired. I yeah. Just, like as a principle almost. I know. And I, it's one of those things where like if I could do it, I would. <laughs> on, but stage, the, yeah, the, so on stage, yeah. like having a wireless was game changing. Yeah. There's a lot of people who still rock cables and yeah. I would just trip over it and shit. Yeah. It's like more almost honestly, like it's not even like so I can move around. It's just so I don't fuck it's up. A safety. <laughs> yeah. It's like just an extra thing I don't have to worry yeah. about, like, you know, knocking the cable out or anything like yeah. that. Like it's just, it's all attached to me. Like, yeah. You know, uh, but yeah, definitely that power amp issue would probably be like the worst tech mishap. Or no, because we're lucky enough that that really hasn't happened. But like anything happening with like a computer live where like the click gets messed up, but I've, we've luckily. Knock on wood if there's any wood around. There is. Yeah, this table is wood under it. There's sound foam here. Fire. But, I'll knock on wood. Uh, knock on wood. We never have computer issues yeah. because um, that's where shit would hit the fan for me. My uh, my best one of all time is my first day of tour of my whole life. Um, I'm traveling. I'm down in Louisiana. Uh, we've been in the studio. I was with Call at Home at the time. Uh, yep. And so we were there for recording in Louisiana for a week, and they were playing shows like on the way back home up north. Mm-hmm. And the show is, yeah, it's fine. It's whatever in this venue. And I'm their direct support. So it's not like, it's not sold out. It's not full, but it's pretty yeah. well attended. Mm-hmm. So there's enough people there. 
and I'm walking, taking photos, and I'm trying to walk like behind the drums to get photos. And it's one of those like the rule of thumb is always like move between songs. Yeah, yeah. And in my head, I was like, ah, fuck it, I'm on tour. I have the right to go doing yeah. a song, whatever. Um, I bumped like a, a surge protector that apparently powered the entire thing. Oh. And it was one of those that like I bumped so slightly, like I I, I barely felt, I didn't feel like I touched it. I just yeah. see hear everything go silent. And I look like out at the band and I'm like, yo, what happened? And everyone's just looking back at me like, what did you do? Including the drummer who's like yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Ooh. And I look down, there's a surge protector unplugged and I just plug it back in. Like in my head as if I'm just going to plug it back in and, and life's like, going to yeah. go back. Yeah. No, not at all. Oh. Uh, it just fucked up everything. And I was mortified. And thankfully it was like their second to last song or something. So they were just like, whatever, yeah, yeah, no yeah. problem. Like, yeah, they were cool. We'll just play the last song at No Harm, No Foul kind of yeah, deal. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't a big deal, but it was one of those like, oh, just that moment of like looking up being like, what happened? And everyone's looking at me like, yo, what did you do? Uh, <laughs> it was like, and yeah, first day, first show. Like, That's like the oh, one man. scary thing about having like all-inclusive rigs like that. Yeah. It's like technically like, if your whole thing's on a fucking power conditioner. And Dude, a big I rack, stand by that. That's it was, plugged into the wall one time. Dude. Which is like, in my mind, that's the greatest thing in the universe. Yeah. But then I think about like that could happen the, too. I like, uh, some degree, for my own ego, but I, I refuse to believe that the outlet, like, I refuse to believe it was like a sturdy plug. I refuse to believe it should have yeah, been yeah. like the whole show should have been powered behind the drummer. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, there's so many things that went wrong yeah, that yeah. aren't my fault, but I definitely was the one who made everything go yeah. wrong and I have to take accountability for that. Um, but yeah, that one always stands out. And it, uh, I, forgot about it forever and then i was yeah wondering like did anything go wrong at the web store i was yeah. like holy hell one time i made something go really wrong yeah dude dude yeah <laughs> luckily i've never like i'm feel like i'm so fucking anxious and conscious of that shit yeah yeah that like i yeah i make sure that everything's completely I, out of my fucking way i do my best yeah to not touch any yeah, dude, lesson learned now. for sure for sure big time yeah um but yeah, hell yeah, dude. We had the live set. Uh, I wanted to get to the music videos as well. Okay. Um, so I know I'm terrible with song names. So that's what that's I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, here. yeah, yeah. Um, but I know the new one is called Conscience. Yes. And that video is straight jacket themed. Is yes. that a concept you guys came up with? I know you filmed with. Yeah. Harry. So that was that was all Kevin. Okay. Uh, he was in charge of well, te technically, like the song kind of topic on that one was Kevin and Boomer, mm -hmm. um, and the whole idea for the video was Kevin. Mm -hmm. um, he's kind of the visionary with that kind of stuff. Cool. Okay. For some reason, like I didn't even like realize it until this album, but there's some stuff that I just like, or and some of us just in general, like just don't even have a vision for it all. Mm -hmm. And the best part is being able to trust your bandmates, of course. So I obviously trust Kevin and his, yeah. his, uh, any vision he has for music videos is actually going on to, I'll go back to conscious real quick, but mm -hmm. we're about to hopefully, cause we're about to, our next single is a lyric video. And with that, we'll be announcing our new record finally, which I'm the happiest and most excited about, which I was going to say this as an exclusive here because I want, because we haven't put it out there. Like Hell people yeah. ask and that's, we don't have like a 100% day yet because we're just waiting on one more thing. But mm -hmm. with the next single, we're going to release a, a lyric video, but we're going to have, we have one more single done and it's, the video was filmed by Eric, but then we had it sent through like this AI engine. I'm aware of some of this. Yeah. yeah. That this, that this dude that our bass player Zach met and- yeah, it's going to be fucking crazy. And once again, that was entirely Kevin's idea. That's cool. Like the whole idea for the way the music video looked and it matches like the way the lyrics flow. It's fucking so cool. So yeah, Kevin is the guy who had the idea for Conscience. That was that was all him. It's pretty much essentially just him not in the straight jacket. It's just him as himself. And then him in the straight jacket is like the crazy part mm -hmm. of him like trying to get the fuck out because mm -hmm. he uh, – which I think he mentioned on here, but he – had uh he suffered from substance abuse and uh so did boomer and they're both fucking crushing it now oh, good for that. and that song is like a, a pretty much about that oh yeah just the inner demons that mm -hmm. i mean everybody has you know what i mean yeah but it's obviously more specific to them yeah because boomer wrote that song that was his song oh yeah so i uh i want to go back you said that you in this band you realize that you're not good at everything that you have to like, ask for help with oh, some yeah, stuff yeah. And the, the video stuff uh, i got business advice that was to learn to fail quickly yeah and it's a similar thing to what you're saying yeah, yeah, of yeah. like yeah learn what you're good at and learn what you're not great yeah. at 
And I think that's a really interesting, and it's a it's a bold thing to say yeah, in the sense yeah. of like, because the the ego part of our brain is like, no, I'm gonna do, it. I'm gonna figure it out. I'm the artist. I yeah, want to yeah. say, and yeah, it's a really brave and bold thing to be like, no, I'm good at this part of it, and this part just isn't how my brain works so much. Yeah, and it's cool. Then yeah, you have guys in the band that you can trust to pick up that part, dude. It's so fucking sick. Yeah. We all like we all especially in the past like six or seven months, we've really tried to kind of compartmentalize our jobs in the band. Mm -hmm. Like one person is fully in you to fully take care of this one thing, start to finish. That's cool. And you just tell us like what's going on with it. Yeah. That way we all are just like, aren't swamped. Yeah. And that's like something I had the idea for the iniquity music video. I mm -hmm. just wanted to rip off, break those bones video from sugar. Okay. I just wanted like all of us, all black single light source. Cause I just think that music video is hard as fuck. Hell yeah. And for some reason, like when we were doing music videos, for the new record, like I just didn't even think about the fact that I hadn't thought about a single thing, but mm -hmm. everybody else already had, or well, Kevin realistically mm -hmm. had come up with the ideas for all of it. Mm -hmm. And in my head, I was like, damn, I didn't even like, if somebody asked me like, what are we going to do for the music? I'd be like, fuck, I don't even know. Like, I'll it's, find it's, something else that we can reference. Yeah, I'll find, but, yeah, yeah, but I didn't have like an idea. So I'm glad that mm -hmm. Kevin had a full blown vision. That's cool. That's like, I can rely on him. I don't have to think about that. Like I just show up and play guitar, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which is fucking that's the way it should be. I'm very lucky to have the guys I have. Yeah, very I'm lucky. excited for that third video. I've seen little pieces of it, and yeah, I think I saw some early drafts of oh, it. Yeah, I'll save dude. some of that conversation for when that's more ready to happen. Yeah, dude, that um, shit's. I'm so excited about that. What uh, what are your jobs in the band? Did you kind of segment stuff? What are some of the tasks that you're manning? So, I will say, and they will agree with me. Mm -hmm. I'm kind. The one thing is, I am kind of like the mom of the band. Sure. Um, while I don't do everything yeah i'm the one who's always like all right this has to get done this mm -hmm. has to get done this has to get done like yeah. what's what the steps we need to take yeah. yeah we need that um that's just how my brain fucking works and yeah. i feel wicked bad sometimes because i definitely like micromanage my band that's mm -hmm. wicked not chill but yeah i try really hard to not while also keeping everybody up like that would be it, me and dude, the band for sure it's five people so like we forget shit like i fucking know that we forget shit you know yeah. what i mean so i try to stay on top of just like what is going on and mm -hmm. then that's when we like Zach was fully in charge of that AI video because he knows the guy. Mm -hmm. So he's like, I will just directly email him and I, that will yeah. be me. Yeah. I will, you know, be the messenger for you guys, but that's yeah. me. Um, I was in charge of um, getting like the mixes situated with Cody Stewart. Like I was the one who talked to Cody alone. No one else talked to him. Only mm -hmm. I did. Um, so I would say, yeah, that was the my biggest job, I would say, on this one. Just kind of keeping everybody on top of stuff. Um, I took care of like the lyric video. Mm -hmm. I do most of the pre-pro mm -hmm. between me and Kevin. Um, Kevin's definitely like, I mean, I think he's a better engineer and recording engineer than I am. Um, which he might disagree, but whatever. <laughs> but he, uh, we both take care of, he did most of the vocals on his own, okay. but I did all the instrumentals. I recorded everything. Is that I writing did, or is that the demos? What both. Is, okay. Uh, well, no. Writing, that's the fucking sickest part is okay. writing, dude, we all write. Hell yeah. Literally all of us. Hell there yeah. is songs on the record that like we did together. There's songs that are straight up old, like the first song on the record, the first technically two songs. Well, I'll say the first song. The first song on the record is straight Zach. It's all Zach. That's I cool. literally just helped him take his riffs and like kind of compose mm -hmm. them, but it is entirely Zach. Conscience, yeah. all Boomer. I did not write a single mm -hmm. note of that song. Um, so we all, that's like the coolest part is we all have Hell yeah. full, like I have full songs on the record. I have songs that I have just like a, a riff in, mm -hmm. um, which is really, really dope. Um, well, was, that's what was, cool. What that's was, important to like delegate parts of it and then have the, the core of it still be collaborative. I oh think yeah, yeah. A lot of times the delegating gets taken too far and it's like, we delegate the songwriting to you yeah, and I yeah. take care of the merch. And it's like, hey, yeah. we're not Walmart. Like that's we're still, the, that's the one part that's like, I'm like grateful for, and also like it takes an insane amount of stress yeah. off of all of us. Yeah. That like like perfect example like this new record's about to come out. Kevin has written like four or five songs already for the new record, and they are very Kevin style songs. Mm -hmm. He writes completely different than all of us do, and it's going to be sick to be able to use just straight up take his song, stick it on the record. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be songs where like we might pick and prod and and change stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's like the fucking sickest part. So having everybody being able to do that shit is, is next level. That's so cool. I, even though, so even if it's writing, I was going back to what we were talking about before. I was the one who kind of brought everything into Reaper. I use Reaper for a DAW, but mm -hmm. brought everything into the DAW and made sure, you know, I did some light editing. I'm not the best with editing. Like I'm kind of new at recording and I'm like getting a lot, a lot better at it. 
but I'm not fucking Cody Stewart level. That's a fact. You know what Those I mean? Those beginner gains are so much fun. Like yeah, that oh, first, like, they year are. Or two yeah, of the yeah. software. It's like, oh, every week I'm so much better than I was. Yeah, last yeah. Week. So editing is like one of the big things that I've been trying to tackle and make sure that like even while I'm demoing, I'm getting final takes mm-hmm. because a it just makes it easier. If the riff is sick yeah. and everybody likes it, why am I gonna like half-ass track it? I might as well just track it yeah. full full bore. Yeah. So we do that, and yeah, I was in charge of like all of that, and then. Yeah, like I said, Matt took care of merch for the record. Um, so it's like it's really perfectly evenly spread. It's kind of fucking sick, dude. Hell yeah! Because we, like I said, not not a single one of us is like overwhelmed. Really, mm-hmm. there's like moments where we kind of get overwhelmed, course, yeah. but like we made a clear thing like let's have everybody have a job because yeah. it'll make everybody's life easier. It does. It's way more swallowable and just, you can handle shit I've a heard... lot quicker too. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's five different tasks happening and you know at once. Accountable. Also yeah, exactly. It doesn't get done, yep. which unfortunately has to happen sometimes. Um, but yeah, I, I feel you. And I think we often, or I often end up talking about the, you know, hundred different jobs you have to do to be in a band dude, it's and crazy. people are overwhelmed just being because they have to do artists of, of any, them. any kind. Now, also, dude. Yeah. Um, you're doing like every kind of media now. But, you just start the podcast, you do video, photo. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting a little overwhelmed here, but it's all going great. I'm yeah. enjoying it all. Uh, I think it's been the fun part of it for me is that I can kind of explore whatever's interesting to me. Yeah, and so dude. during the thick of the pandemic, it was like, okay, well, I can't be at a concert. Let's start animating. Let's figure out 3D yeah. and CG. And so thankfully, that's been cool. fun. Um, and yeah, this is a, another version of that of like, yeah, I didn't quite plan for this to be part of it, but I enjoyed it. I did it a year ago. I did a couple episodes. It was yeah. kind of the origin of like, oh, that sounds fun. Mm-hmm. And then I did them and it just wasn't sustainable. It yeah. was every, like every episode was a production. And yeah. It was like, I don't yeah, have yeah. time to do all this. So like, you're starting from zero every single time. Yeah. Um, so oh, that'd be building hell. a set was important and then the building the set and also building the back end stuff. So all the premiere, all the files or all the projects are laid out. So I just toss footage in and then, yeah, rewatch to make sure yeah, I didn't yeah, say anything yeah. too crazy. That's kind of um, sick. So yeah, that was the you streamline your shit, dude. That's like, yeah. I mean, it's similar to what you were saying of giving everyone a job and yeah, yeah making dude, a I used to track like, every song in its own session. <laughs> and it was every song would come out fucking different. Yep. It's sounding completely different. Yeah. I'd be starting from zero. Yeah. And one of my friends was like, like, why don't you, like, track in one session mm-hmm. and then put all your songs in another session and mix in another? So, like, anytime you make – just make sure all your guitars yep. are recorded, you know, as consistent as possible. But mm-hmm. when you're making a change to one song, it just happens to fucking all other nine songs. Yeah. And that changed the fucking game for me. You know yep. what I mean? It's like a cheat code almost. Like, yeah. it's like – I just have to track and it's like puzzle pieces. I just make sure the guitars go here and – I use that analogy all the time. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's fucking – that's like – like you said, like, this is, like, so streamlined now. Mm-hmm. Like, you come down here and it's fucking – Pretty much, yeah. Everything's set, good to go. Yeah. These are the only things I have to set up. Everything else is like retired from other video sets. Yeah. So, yeah, it's That's fucking sick, dude. Um, Hell yeah, dude. That's the conscience video. (laughs) Yes. That's a lot. Oh, my God. (laughs) I know we have the iniquity video is the other one. Yes. Uh, I wanted This one's interesting to me. Uh, So, I know Kevin comes into the band after Will leaves the band. And I didn't know Will was in until Kevin mentioned that. nobody. Uh, Most people don't. And it's it's crazy. Going back to the record, I I listened to your first record ahead as well. Yep. Uh, And hearing that, I was like, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You can hear it now with a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah, dude. But having Will leave is an interesting one to me because in the sports brain, it's like, he's your goal scorer. He's the person. And yeah. it's like, as a team, you all believe in yourself and you believe that you're doing all the work to set him up for success. And that yeah, makes yeah. him be great, but you are losing someone who is incredible at what they do. And then yeah. Kevin comes in and you're both excited to watch him go, but you're kind of in this restarting phase. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah what's that transition like where, yeah. It's so I would a, love to talk about this. Yeah. I, and I love me and Will are still very, yeah. we, I would say very close. We yeah. talk, we talk a good amount. And like, he is always incredibly nice to me. And like, we ended on great terms. He was yeah. not, you know, he, you know, didn't leave us hanging or anything Mm -hmm. like that. Um, but it's funny because at that point, like he wasn't popular. Yeah. It's a promotion that you guys knew he was capable of, but the world, yeah. was Like, so, I mean, I don't know if you know, so we did like a short, it was like a weekend run with Lorna Shore and Awaken Providence back in 2016. Okay. So we all met then. Mm -hmm. And when In Depths and Tides ended, I sent Human Pathogen at the time to Will I was like, yo, you should throw vocals on this song. Like, you're not in a, you know, he had left Awake in Providence. Mm-hmm. He was, he made, might have had just joined Monument of Memory. And I think that's what it is, Monument of, yeah. And uh, he was like, dude, he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll do a song. And I, like, knowing his stature kind of in Deathcore, like, he wasn't, I shouldn't say it wasn't popular, but he wasn't, like, 
he didn't have notoriety. He's the face of it right yeah, now. Yeah, he's yeah. the face of it right now. He <laughs> yeah. is the fucking yeah. guy now. <laughs> yeah. But he he was just a really good deathcore vocalist yeah. before. Yeah. He was just grouped in with all the right. great guys, which right. obviously he always will Still be. Still an elite crew. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, dude, yeah, I'll do it. So I like expected to you know, have to pay him kind of deal. And he literally like a day later sent me back the song with Hell vocals yeah. on it. Yeah. And he was like, he was like, what do you think of this? And I was like, dude, it's fucking insane. And there were a couple edits and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, if you're like willing to, like you can do some other songs too. Like we don't really, we didn't have a plan at all then. Mm-hmm. You know, we just had the songs and we yeah. would jam kind of infrequently. Um, and yeah, he, he hit me back and he was like, dude, these songs are fucking great. Like I'll do all of them. And I was like, what? Are you sure? <laughs> and after a couple of weeks, oh, I was yeah. like, should we just like start a new band? Like, should yeah. we just like, we don't, the internet band thing is like such a normal thing nowadays yeah. where it's like, yeah. even if you do plan on playing live, like you, you don't have to do it right away. Yep. You really don't have to, especially in death core. I feel like that's like, shadow of intent. Weirdly, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I mean, even not even just them, like other bands, like they just push online first for even just like yeah. six months and then they play a show. Yeah. You know what I mean? It doesn't so have to smart. be years. Yeah. It's still smarter to do it that yeah. way for even any, any band. Anything. Yeah. yeah you know yeah. what I mean? Um, so we said, fuck it. And yeah, we, he was like, yeah, I'll join. Like, I'm not doing any death course stuff. Like I'd love to. So we essentially made a band. We made Euclid. We came up with the name, you know, mm-hmm. we got some art and, and then 15 songs. He did 15 songs. You know, we have an EP and a whole album out with him. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's fucking sick. Cause there's a lot of people that loved it and were like, obviously knew him from Awaken Providence and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And yeah, it's funny. Cause obviously now he's fucking absolutely bonkers huge. And yeah. there's still people who are like, I'll see on the internet. They'll be like, a lot of people look over Euclid. Like he, mm-hmm. there's 15 songs of Will on it. If you want to hear more Will, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And it's definitely benefited us yeah. even retroactively. So it's, it's 100%. definitely cool. But, uh, the cool part too is having Kevin come on board after yeah. that was, uh, for me, a breath of fresh air because mm-hmm. I was, you're worried. I've, yeah, I've had a lot of vocalists yeah. come through the band. I, we had Ben, you know what I mean. I lost Ben, lost mm-hmm. Will, to t- the two biggest deathcore fucking yeah. death metal deathcore bands. <laughs> yeah, good for talent. In. Yeah, right. You can take that. Yeah. I'm lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude, I'm just waiting for fucking Matt to quit now. He's going to join another big band. I was literally joking with him yesterday. I was like, when are you quitting, dude? I'm on course to lose somebody good. You know what I mean? So, yeah, Kevin Kevin was fucking sick. Yeah. He fit in great. He is, aside from, like, the crazy shit that Will can do, Kevin is the other version of Deathcore Vocalist that I fucking love. Like, I mm-hmm. love fucking Nate Johnson and Joe Bad. Those are, mm-hmm. like, two of my favorites. Obviously, Phil Bozeman, who are, like, I mean, Phil Bozeman started getting crazier, like, back in the day mm-hmm. and doing the faster stuff, you know what I mean? But it's still very straightforward. It's not yeah. all over the place like the new vocalists are, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So Kevin Kevin was absolutely the best choice, and I'm mm-hmm. glad we went with him. If I'm being honest, I love Will, but I think Kevin even fits our music a little bit better mm-hmm. just because we're – I have to be more aware of this. I started writing for vocals, like, in the back end of writing for the band – I never used to do that. So now, like, I'm able to do that and allow Kevin to kind of shred vocals a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's fucking, he's absolutely perfect for us. Hell yeah. That's and we exciting. obviously get along because he's the fucking best. So. He is, yeah. It's been yeah. fun to watch it all come together. Oh, it's, yeah, the, it's amazing. Kind of empathize with you guys of, like, yeah, it's you knew what you had. Yeah. <laughs> and then instead exactly. of getting to share it with the world, someone else gets to share it with the I world. Know, I know, I know. Yeah, you're you're happy for your friend, but it does put you in kind oh, of a yeah. strange spot there. Yeah, and I like I said, I couldn't have asked for anything better with Kevin. Yeah. He's he yeah. is absolutely the best choice, and you know people are already immediately compare him to mm-hmm. Will, which is like so lame to yeah. me. Just because yeah. they're drastically different. Yeah. You could just prefer Will, but yeah. I don't think Will is by default better because I'll never forget Will hearing in Depths and Tides old vocalist. And being like, he's the best vocalist I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. And thinking, I'm like, that he's so straightforward in comparison, mm-hmm. but Will loved him. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. it's just a different taste, man. Yep. Will is like, tech, is like he's just way te- more technical. That's really what it is. But I don't yeah. think he still serves the songs correctly, just as good as Kevin does. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's the most important, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a interesting thing. I think it also is a testament to Kevin of, yeah, being brave to step into that and crush the role and it's all gone great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I know when I chatted with him, it's like, yeah, that must have been a big shoes to come in. And yeah, try dude. So, um, I, but then I you guys, imagine he did it though. He uh, fucking did it. Crushed it, crushed it, crushed it. Uh, and then, so we come out, go through a transition, we drop iniquity. Yep. Uh, that's our black video referencing the old Meshuggah video. Yep. Uh, any, any stories from there, anything that stands out from that video process? Uh, no. 
Uh, I hadn't done a music video with Eric. I think the only thing that stands out is how long we were there for. Okay. Because uh, the first time I did a music video with Eric, we were there for like almost 12 hours. Wow. We what, were, what video was that? Uh, in Depths and Tides Parallel. Okay. Um, and we were maybe in his first like – I would say 25 to 50 range music videos. That's cool. He definitely had a, cool. done a good chunk of them, but yeah. he definitely wasn't where he's at now Again, yeah. where he's done, you know, hundreds at this <laughs> point. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And dude, we filmed for so fucking long. And that yeah. was the first thing like, I asked him. I was like, he said, get, get there at like four or like five or six. And in my head, I was like, bro, <laughs> oh, I live no. like four hours away, dude. Like I'm not trying to get there late. And like yeah. my first question was like, I'm like obviously like anxious about it. So I didn't yeah, like yeah, sort yeah. of ask him like, how long are we going to be? Yeah. I was like, Eric, uh, <laughs> How long do you think we like gonna be shooting for? He's like, oh, probably like just two or three hours. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, I, I don't need nearly as much as I used to take. Like, I know how to like figure this shit out now. Yeah. So yeah, we did maybe three takes each, maybe four max. Uh, slightly different angles. Some mm -hmm. not going hard. Some going hard. And I was like, wow, this is so much easier and like so much more straightforward. And yeah, it was so much fucking better. Hell yeah. Uh, but no, it was actually a pretty normal. It was a pretty normal process for us. I feel like because all of us had already done it and worked yeah. with Eric before, it was we're very lucky where the people we're with, they understand how we are and who we are. So it's super easy to work. And I'm glad you talked about the videos getting simpler. I've had like a crisis, uh, not a crisis, like a, I've had a, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, uh, internal dilemma yeah, as I yeah. wrap up shoots earlier and earlier. I'm like, it's like, am I just rushing? Am I shorting people? It's like, no, I'm just figuring stuff out and getting stuff done quicker. Yeah. And more you just know what like, works. So it's like, you yeah. don't have to like uh, guess anymore. You know what I mean? You don't yeah. have to like uh, take a bunch of different shots and you know, excuse me, see yeah. like what works or what doesn't work. It's yeah. like, well, last video, I only used this, this style shot yeah. for not, you know, half of it. And then this style shot for the other. Mm -hmm. why am I going to bother doing the two other shots that I didn't fucking use? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I think it also it's working with a band that experiences you guys. It's like, yeah, we can do three takes and we're good. Yeah. As yeah, opposed yeah. to there are times where I'm on set and it's like, we need 10 takes. Yeah. Like, there's, we, it is mandatory because that's the only way we're going to get three minutes of content out of this. Yep. Uh, whereas with, yeah, guess you guys talked about your experience and how you guys been through, oh, been through so much band stuff. It's like, yeah, three takes. We're good. We'll, yeah. we'll be good. We're Half so lucky. First take, we're in the moment. Yeah. Once again, being able to trust your guys. Like, yeah. It's fucking it I don't have to. No one has to tell us yeah. what to do, really. You know yeah. what I mean? We all know how to look. We know how to fucking move. Yep. We know how to operate whatever lighting source is yeah. being used. Like, yeah. And even Eric is incredible at direction, too, yeah. which is really helpful. He'll be like, yo, yeah. back up a little bit or like pull your head back so the light hits your face a certain way. Yep. And that kind of stuff is like, we just know what to do and we're very lucky. I was on set but, with him. I was, I think, uh, I can't remember what bands I was with, but I was yeah doing photos for some band that were filming with him, and yep. I still look back and like stuff I learned from him and tips and just being yeah. on set. And it's like yeah, it's a smart dude. It's a dude. Yeah, it's a good guy. Yeah, it's fucking um, awesome. But uh, yeah, I don't have any good stories from iniquity. Sorry. It's, <laughs> luckily, you... we're lucky that it was fucking <laughs> fucking smooth as silk, baby. It was fucking yeah, easy and simple. Uh, my last note about Euclid here is about the writing process, uh, which we did chat about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's one thing I want to ask about. It is a song that I believe is unreleased. So if I okay. am Dude. oversharing myself, but I no, you can heard share. it live. Uh, and okay. I think it's printed on merch, so I'm like yes. double safe. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's about the phrase river pig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does that mean? Like, I know it, it's so, the, on the merch, I think it's, yeah, river pig is floating on a sea of tears, crimson yeah, tears. Yeah, crimson tears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so here's the thing is I'm a fucking space cadet with lyrics. Okay. So if I'm being honest, I might butcher this. Please. Um, I know that it's an Elden Ring reference combined with a reference from a maybe a podcast okay. that Kevin listens to, I think is what it is. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm the worst, dude. I Kevin, I always like, dude, we all joke because I like, I listen to like a lot of instrumental music mm -hmm. and like when bands release instrumental albums, like I just fucking That's pop you. it on. I just like the music. I'm not, I'm yeah. not against vocalists, but dude, yeah. Ben used to like rip me apart because I'd always be like... I'd always be like, oh, I'd rather listen to this without the vocalist. He's like, yeah, hey, fuck you, dude. Because I'm like saying that to one of the of best course, You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, but um, That's funny. I'm so much the opposite. Uh, music without vocals to me, like I, it's cool and I, I appreciate the details in a way. Yeah. But vocals and lyrics are 85% of what I consume and everything dude, behind it supports that. And like I'm probably unaware of how much I am influenced by that. Yeah. But yeah, it's 90% vocal driven. In my dude, brain. we could go off. I could go off on a crazy tangent right now and I won't, but – it is fascinating the way I listen to music or hear music compared mm -hmm. to so many other people. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like scientifically proven that people hear drums and vocals first. That's like how the fucking brain works. Sure. And I am just not. I'm guitar first. I'm like riffs first. I When I listen to a band, 
if the vocals are fucking sick, it's a plus. But if the vocals are bad and the music is sick, mm-hmm. I'm able to listen to it. That's cool. People yeah, yeah. roast me because of yeah. perfect example is Periphery, dude. Nobody fucking likes Spencer, dude. But I love Periphery, and I will listen to them to the day I die because I just love their fucking music. Oh yeah. But Spencer, like, I'd rather listen to their shit <laughs> instrumental. And no offense to Spencer, like, there are parts in songs that I love him for, but sure. yeah. So going back to River Pig, I don't. I, I'd have to read the lyrics and That's like, but I, good. to my knowledge, it's an Elden Ring reference. Okay. Um, That's enough for me. I was just trying, I couldn't combine River and Pig in any way. I know. That made any and no, sense I think it's brain. like from a podcast where like <laughs> but, someone on the podcast yeah. like references like what happens to like a dead body when it like someone throws a dead body in the river and it like swells up with water. As you're explaining that, I'm wondering. I feel like Kevin might have explained this to me. Now that you say it, yeah, because that sounds familiar. And that, in I think that that that's what it is. But okay. then, like the lyrics coincide with Elden Ring somehow. Okay. Because most of the, I to my knowledge, there's two songs. This is fucking hilarious. Mm-hmm. Classic. We're still metalheads, but we're also fucking nerds and losers too. Yep. Okay. So there's and two most songs. Of us are, yeah. yeah, there's two songs. I think about Elden Ring on the record, and the the rest of them are kind of just about personal struggles in life, whether it be addiction or just like yeah. family or inner demons and stuff like that. But there are two songs about fucking Elden Ring because Kevin yeah. is a video game nerd. So, yep. is, so is Zach, dude. Yeah. I would say even Matt is too. So that was something. That, yeah. But um, the River Pig song, it will be out fairly soon. That's the third single releasing. That is the AI video one. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So I'm tale, eager for that. Uh, a, a, a trail of Crimson Tears, like the fucking... It's fucked. The video's fucked. I can't wait for everybody to yeah, see it. Yeah. I'm very excited uh, about that one. I, I'll certainly have someone, whether it's you or someone else, yeah, back on very soon to talk I'll, about that. When absolutely, that absolutely. Um, yes, before we get out of here, I want to talk about Shape Thrower for a minute. Okay, uh, so yeah, absolutely. I am new to Shape Thrower. I honestly didn't Hell yeah. Know you were involved with them. I kind of knew of a band called Shape Thrower. Yeah, yeah. And then as I was looking into this, I was like, oh, hell yeah, that's Maddie. And I realized you were playing drums on it, which yeah, you yeah. mentioned. Yep. Uh, I first saw – my first dive in was you guys were on the uh, Hate 5-6 channel. Yeah, you dude. Know, full video there. Dude. So that was sick, dude. Yeah, what was that? That was fucking sick. I feel like every time we get filmed by somebody, we play like dog shit. <laughs> uh that I liked show, it, but yeah, hell yeah, of course I uh, dude. Everybody, it's one of those things. Once again, yeah. we're like we're the only ones who know how bad it was, yeah. or how bad it was. It probably wasn't just, even bad, dude. As you're describing how you can't hear music, that's how I feel watching movies and trying to explain to people exactly. why I don't like movies or can't. Yep. watch. it's like because your brain works differently. Yeah. You're so in tune um, with visual things that, like, yeah. yeah, I'm obsessed with them all day, and I can't turn yep. it off. I'm sure it's the similar guitar tone thing of like, yeah, you yeah, just yeah, are so obsessed with. Um, bullshitting here but scooping the eq in the yeah, right place yeah, yeah, and cutting yeah. this and it's like yeah yeah do people never fucking pay attention to that shit yeah. but going back to the hey five six video was fucking amazing um i'm very grateful that he ended up coming out to that show and we we're able to film that because dude he's obviously has a massive platform yeah and the coolest part for me with him is that he puts bands like us next to fucking tsunami and drain and so fucking terror yeah. yeah like i think the day after which the other thing is we got voted to youtube before like any of the other bands the way he does mm-hmm. like the whole yeah. like vote for who, we got voted to youtube like before a bunch of bands and that oh, was yeah. fucking crazy that's sick and like the day after ours went up it was like a huge i forget what band but it was like mm-hmm. a fucking huge band it's like uh like a huge band us a huge band and i was that's like sick. that is the shit that's so sick and yeah. he actually gave us, you know, a really nice compliment after. And he watched a whole set and he's like, yo, you guys are like really good. Like I like the different sound because we kind of like a more like old school kind of like melodic sound. Mm -hmm. Everybody says we sound like Misery Signals, which is like the greatest compliment ever to me. I fucking love that band. And so I feel like a lot of like, like in this weird area where like we play with like a lot of like hardcore bands or like the more like beat downy kind of, I don't even know. I don't even know genres anymore. People say metalcore and it's like a death metal band to me, but yeah. Um, so we get stuck in that, but hearing that from him like is, cool. was fucking sick. Yeah, and that show was great for us, and that was we had like our new vocalist and stuff like that. It was mm-hmm. like our second show with our new vocalist, and it went really well. Um, so that was a fucking sick experience. How's it? Uh, are drums your first instrument? Then what's your no first? guitar is okay. So drums is something you've picked up. Drums I played in high school because uh, all of my friends played guitar. Mm-hmm. and no one played drums and it was like fucking sucking like not being able to jam in with anybody you <laughs> know what funny. i mean yeah so i learned drums very poorly i never took lessons or anything for yeah. drums and i just learned in my basement and i listened to like a ton of white chapel and i just wanted to play like fucking i think his name is kevin lane the okay. old drummer of white chapel i just wanted to play like him so okay. uh i learned from him and then i like love the drummer fucking gideon i love his style and yeah when shape thrower started up 
like for real. Because this is another weird thing about Shape Thrower is they existed without me. It wasn't called Shape Thrower, but they existed without me. They wrote two songs. And while they were in college, we would just jam when they would like come home on breaks and stuff like that. We played like the two, the same two songs for like four years straight, bro. Hell yeah. Like we would just meet up and like smoke and drink and yep. play these two songs. Live the best, yeah. And they got out of college. And when they got out of college, they were like, should we like hang out more and like write more? It was like, yeah, fuck it. And that's when Boomer came on because that was kind of in between In Depths and Tides and mm -hmm. whatever we've been doing, you know, with Euclid and He's an Edict and stuff like that. So he started playing bass just because we didn't have a bass player. And yeah, it got to a point where we were, same thing with literally almost the same exact thing with Euclid. We're like, we had songs. We're like, should we just like actually be a band? We're like yeah. putting in like most of the work with the writing. So we're like, working 40 hours. You might as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so we did that and, and yeah, we started playing and it's just, yeah, it's crazy. So I think, um, oh, I forget where I was going with that. No, spaced out totally. That's Damn. all good. But yeah, it's definitely sick being in that band. Cause it's, it's once again, a thing where people think that we're like a new band, but like mm -hmm. to us, we aren't. Yeah. So we play these shows and being the kind of weird band, like we're trying to find our place, but it's been great. Um, and the Hey Five Six thing was really good for us, and we get good, great shows now, and have fairly good followings. So. Hell yeah! How yeah. does the uh, playing a show on drums for you compare to being on guitar on stage? Like I assume oh, with dude, drums you get the throne. I'm the so glad you it. fucking asked. I hate it. Interesting. I'm so fu so. I was pretty nervous. I was the total opposite when you started that sentence. I was no, dude. So I was pretty nervous for the Euclid show. Yeah. Because it's just first show back, yeah. and I have. I it's been five and a half years. I started recording. I feel like mm -hmm. my standards have gotten so much higher. Because I'm just more aware of the bad and good of like what yeah. certain things are that I like. Yeah, dude, you can flub on guitar. You can't flub on drums, dude. You cannot make a, a millisecond yeah. of a mistake. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And especially me, I'm playing to a click, just yeah. like Matt is. So, yeah, it's yeah. way more nerve wracking. We talk about the your wireless drops out. It's yeah, I'm, whatever. I'm but the, your drum kit somehow fell apart. It's yeah, like, or yeah, yeah or I miss. I'm off the click. Yeah. You know, fucking the backtracks hit early or late or something like that. Um, yeah. I fucking fuck up a fill. I drop a stick. Like even your thing gets unplugged. Like dude, the, yeah. yeah, dude. So and like I said, you're the pulse of the band. Yeah, you can't. There's no room for error. Yeah. If I flub a note on guitar, no one is gonna fucking notice. Yeah. If I miss a downbeat or I play a weird kick pattern over a breakdown, like yeah. people are gonna fucking know that shit's mic'd up loud as fuck coming through the PA. Yeah. So uh, no, I am the most anxious when I play drums. That's really interesting. Oh, that's what we're talking—the first instrument thing. Yeah. So it was guitar, and I just learned drums in high school because of that but that's interesting and even though i've been playing for mad long and i've played a bunch of shows at this point it does not get easier for me that's really i'm glad you said that it's cool that yeah it's a, a brave and bold thing to admit so i'm glad you did dude have you seen me uh, before a shape thrower set i am shitting my pants every time that's funny. the room is packed the room is empty it doesn't make a difference i cannot control how nervous i get yeah. before i play drums i don't know why every single show is like that yeah. like dude you're gonna be fine we've practiced like a thousand <laughs> times in the past two weeks like you're gonna yeah. have no issues, and I'm like, okay. Oh, okay. You both know you're gonna have no issues, but also oh my God. there's yeah, still all the issues that could happen. But the yeah. good part for me with drums is I get like a song in, and I just find my groove, and I'm like, okay, everything's yeah. fine. I yeah. I get over it very quickly, but yeah. the exact same thing happens yeah. every time. Interesting. Yep. I've never. Uh, yeah, I've always associated drums with a source of power and a throw. You just have a drum. Thrown. When I get comfortable. And yeah. Yeah. For sure. I I so it's interesting to. I've never thought of the other side of, yeah, with great power comes great responsibility. Literally. Oh, that <laughs> so, is the exact, that is yeah. a flawless um, fucking analogy because that is, yeah. that is like, yeah. Yeah, you can't fuck up. There's no room for error on drums. You That's know what I mean? I, I Especially in metal drums. I always prescribe that to the vocalists somehow in my brain of like, they're the ones who can't mess up and they have to perform well and talk well. And it's like, drums no, their and voice vocals. cracks. But even, I, I guess what I'm trying to get to is that even drums are less forgiving. Because like, if your voice cracks, fine. Your mic cuts out, Fine. But, like, if the drums stop, like, yeah, everyone is like, yeah, what the fuck just happened? Yeah, like, you are the, the whole, heartbeat of yeah, the song. That's it is, yeah. It, you can't, yeah. There's, yeah. like I said, I've said it a thousand times already, there's no room for error. You yeah. just cannot, yeah. you can't miss anything. Interesting. At least that's how I feel. I mean, there's yeah. probably people who, you know, someone I've, else I, would say that, yeah, the fretboard is stressful and the drums yeah. are nice because they're, or even that, like, yeah. when I have bad sets, like, yo, you fucking crushed it. And I'm like, dude, I messed up so, and they're like, I didn't notice one time, dude. So that's another thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, being critical. You hear things, once again, going back, being the artist, you see and hear things very differently than everybody else. You know yeah. what I mean? A lot different. Yeah. Um, I think that's the fun part of it. Uh, mm. It's a, uh, yeah, that, uh, that uh, like, 
perpetual pursuit of getting better that you know is never going to end. Yeah. Like there's never a, there is no album you could write that is going to satiate this desire for progression. Like yeah. whatever. Oh, like, and, oh, I did it. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I don't have to do anymore. Yeah, for me the same video. It's like, I've, I, it's, it used to be scary to me that I was never going to get the thing that makes me feel good. Mm-hmm. And now it's almost like exciting of like, oh, so I get to keep doing this forever. I get to keep optimizing yeah. and, make, and making this thing better. Like that's yep. a, a fun and exciting thing to stare down once Dude. you get past the the dilemma of, yeah, fuck, everything has to get better. Perfect example of that, which talking about shape there is like I don't mix Euclid just mm-hmm. because I don't feel confident that I can get the results that I want for Euclid. Sure. Euclid has to be dumb, polished, and mm-hmm. I, I hate using the word overproduced because that doesn't fucking exist. Yeah. If – Something is pristine. That doesn't mean it's overproduced. It means it's pristine. But that, you know, crystal clear, everything has to be absolutely flawless. With Shape Throw, I mix for us. Hell yeah, okay. So that's a place, especially like with writing for, for Euclid and like I obviously mix our demos and stuff like that. But it's great being able to be satisfied momentarily because that's mm-hmm. also a great thing is being like, yeah. Oh, I learned this new thing. I applied it and it fucking rips and my mix is that much better. That immediately makes me go, I did the thing I thought I couldn't do. Mm-hmm. Let's pick the next thing I think yeah. I can't do. Yeah. And try it out. Yeah. And hopefully execute it. You know what I mean? And there's the similar dilemma there of like that moment happens six months before anyone else consumes that thing. Yeah, dude. Uh, and for me in music, it's the same thing of like, yeah, I finally got the colors to work. And no one's going to see it by the time anyone else sees it. I yeah. am so far onto the next problem that yeah. it's hard to like, yeah, appreciate that I solved this problem. I know, I know. Uh, I'm sure the record is the same thing of like, yeah, you, you got that mixed thing right you eq yeah. the thing perfectly you got the blend just right and then a year later by the time someone compliments you on it you're like ah but i'm uh i know yeah yeah that's the i yeah the album we're about to release all the songs are old as fuck to us mm-hmm. yeah. and it, it is what it is yeah. i'm i'm which this is rare i feel like i said this to cody but i feel like when i even when i've gotten mixes back in the past from you know other people that i've worked with or whatever like i feel i'm still like yeah, it sounds better. But when I got mixes back from Cody, it was like I heard the song for the first time again. Hell yeah. And that was fucking crazy, dude. And Cody's former Siler, is that right? No, he's uh the Browning. He's still in the Browning. Okay. Yeah, he plays drums. Oh, Cody Ash maybe is a Siler guy. Yes, yes. Okay. Gotcha. I don't Cody, yeah, Cody Ash is a he is drums, but I don't know. Maybe I'm totally I don't know what band he was in. I'm not sure. That's all good for some reason. Whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. He was Cody's well, in the Browning. Yeah. And he's, he's done a, a bunch of fucking sick fucking records. Hell yeah. Definitely look into him. I always shout out Cody as much as I can. He's, he definitely has brought Euclid to like the absolute next level. Hell yeah. Um, his mixes are just, they just add so much dynamic range to the songs that like, I didn't realize were kind of there. Like obviously that I, I strive for to, to be there, but um, I never, I never, he, because I'm the one writing and recording, like you never hear anything. It's not like when you listen to the song or some random yeah. person hears a song. Yeah. Like I could think the song's incredible, but how good is it really if the person yeah. next to me doesn't connect to it? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And getting those mixes back from Cody, I was like, wow. Like it, I felt like an outsider That's hearing cool. my own songs, which has literally never happened to me before. That's I've never exciting. felt that way in my life. That's cool. So that was definitely fucking sick. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah for sure. Exciting. That's a cool gift. Uh, for me as a content creator, it's exciting that I could offer that gift to someone at some yeah. point in time where I can send them a music video and give them that same reaction of like, oh, it's not just me on camera. It's me in the video. Yeah, like, yeah. A oh, it's a totally like, different thing. My song is mixed of like, oh, this is the song. Yeah, like, yeah, different. yeah. It's the same thing That's when cool. you get like a physical, like, when you, yeah. you know, you get, you're able to see a video on like the band's Instagram or yeah. something like that. You're like, oh, it's fucking real now. Yeah. Like when you get the CD or whatever, when I'm... You know, when we get physicals of the new album, I'm going to be able to hold it and be like, damn, this is fucking crazy. I'll tell this- you what, last night at Gamble Pavilion, they were playing my promo videos on the Jumbotron. And it's really? And it's like cool things, but it also is like kind of nauseating because I'm sitting there like in the barricade and the whole front row behind me is like gasping and like commenting, critiquing and like you hear good things. Yeah, like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird like uh, there's, I always forget that my stuff gets consumed, right? I send it out in the podcast. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking to you now. And then I'm going to put it on the internet for the world to see. But it's, like, dead. Like, this exists to me yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah. Time. Which is weird because, like, you have to realize that, like. It's only for consumption. My, all everything I do is for consumption. Yeah, and it's, like, <laughs> it's going to stay there, too. And it's going to stay there yeah. for a long-ass fucking time. Yeah, uh, yeah. so I got to be very careful what I say. I'm yeah. always, um, but, uh, but, yeah, so there's this weird thing. Of, like, I always forget that my stuff is consumed. And then to be in the room with them consuming is, it yeah, is, like, dude. cool. Like, oh, wow, this is 
this is a lot of people watch my stuff, but yeah. it's also like, fuck, fuck, fuck. So I know. Just, you guys do it on your time. I'll do it on my oh, time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, uh, um, yeah. Being just in, an artist in general is just nerve wracking yeah. a lot of the times yeah. for various different reasons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my man, we are past an hour. We're getting, what do we got? 15 oh, minutes yeah. left on the SD card if we want them. Hell yeah. Um, fuck yeah. God, I feel like it's a good place yeah. to wrap up. Yeah, dude. Talking about, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anything coming up next? I know we talked about the album coming up. I was very happy you mentioned it, but I also yes. did find in your Facebook a quote saying there was an album coming up. So, uh, yes. Uh, well, to me, it's like once I knew on the on the low there was a record coming up, yes. but once I see it on a Facebook quote, it's like, cool, now I can bring it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, yes, uh, both my bands, Euclid and Shape Thrower. Fire. Shape Thrower is a little bit farther off from an album, but mm-hmm. we have like maybe a song or two left to write, mm-hmm. um, which I'm, I'm fucking hyped. I've, we've never done an LP with with that band and those guys have never done an album together. So it's really cool to see it all come together. Yeah. Some of the songs are older. Some of the songs are revamped. Some of the songs are brand new. Hell yeah. Um, very excited about that. Just when, cause it's cool to kind of just release different style of music. Like I fucking love like metalcore, like mm-hmm. misery signals, ghost inside. Like I fucking love that shit. Hell yeah. So it's cool to play both versions of music that yeah. I, both versions of metal that I like truly connect with. Yeah. Um, yep. Euclid album is completely fucking done. We're just waiting on a final revision of album art. And then that will be announced in the next couple, hopefully next couple weeks. And like I said, we'll, a new single coming out with that. Um, so it's April now, so sometimes summerish, early fall. For a, what? For Euclid? For, for Euclid? Oh no, we're hoping before that. I'm trying. Oh, yeah. for, we're okay. trying early summer. You know what Hell I mean? Yeah. Um, that's really the goal. Hell yeah! And Shape Thrower is fallish. Yeah, probably fallish for Shape Thrower. Shape Thrower's got a, a couple shows coming up. Um, Euclid. Did just finalize a headliner in Hell yeah, in Providence, Rhode Island. Hell yeah! At dusk, which is fucking sick. Hell yeah! The bands will be announced hopefully in June for that, which I'm very excited for. Fuck yeah! Um, like I said, yeah, Shape Thrower's got a couple of shows at the end of the month, so definitely staying busy. I try to stay consistent, not overdo mm-hmm. it, but try to stay consistent with everything. Yeah. And like I said, the the fact that we're able to have the amount of content we have for both bands is like super super helpful, and it's yeah, everything's going like really smooth. Hell yeah! Which is. I don't know why. I feel like, yeah, right? Yeah, no, for real. I feel like this time around, I feel like this time around with both my bands, I feel like the amount of stuff that I learned yeah. um, from In Depths and Tides and combined with just like the music kind of climate, like the music industry climate yeah. right now, dude, people just love fucking music. Like yeah. not more than before, but I feel like they're more grateful for it now. Sure. Um, like the Body Snatcher show being sold out, like, not that that wouldn't have happened before COVID, but the fact that it sold out as quick as it did in the whole tour, like everybody is having full tours sell out. And that's like, yeah. regardless of how big the band is, like you could play to a fully packed room, but sold out, that's like an, another tier. Yeah. And yeah. there's bands that are selling out before they even leave. Yeah. Before they, like Body Snatcher was sold out mostly before they I even, even fucking that. left, right, dude. Yeah. That's like, yeah. that's huge. Yeah. And like that, the show at the Webster was definitely going to sell out. We probably sped that process up. I'd like to think we did. You know what I mean? But yeah, like that's fucking, that shit's crazy. So combined with that, I feel like, uh, I feel like things are just like uh, much more straightforward nowadays. There's a lot less people kind of like, there's a lot more opportunity, I feel like for bands, you know, Mm -hmm. Dusk, the place that we're doing the the headliner, um, like they don't have a, like a quote unquote promoter. You can just book the room. Oh, hell yeah. Which like, there's a lot of places that are starting to do that. So bands that, you know, don't get cherry picked or, Mm -hmm. you know, certain people operate a certain way. You don't want to work with them or something like that. You don't have to do that anymore. You can kind of make your own. That's cool. I hadn't heard about that yet. I hadn't yeah. heard about that trend starting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dude, that used to be a thing all the time. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Like when I first started just being around bands, mm-hmm. like there was no real such thing as like a quote unquote, like local promoter. Okay. There was like the dudes at the Palladium. Yeah. But they were, those are, that's their yeah. real job. They're yeah. actual national booking agents. Yeah. They're not yeah. just like people who throw on <laughs> Sunday matinees. You know what I mean? Yeah. Those, that's their yeah. real job. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like there's a lot of people who saw that and kind of took that model for like local bands. But I feel like it just doesn't create the community that yeah. needs to be there. You know what I, I mean? Agree. When yeah. it's driven by the musicians, I feel like it's a way different thing. And I feel like people are more in tune with going to the shows and there's more hype around them. You know what I mean? There's obviously still huge touring packages, but those are mm-hmm. also, it's such a cool like separation now where even the huge touring packages are bringing out smaller bands for mm-hmm. weekends. You know, the flyer might have six bands on it, but the bottom three are only playing like a weekend here and there, which is like great because those bands yeah. wouldn't get that opportunity otherwise. Yeah. And they're playing sold out shows like us. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I, 
I didn't think our first show was going to be a sold out show. That's about as good as I, was, I would hope it would be. Who wouldn't want that? You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. the fact that it was, and it was sold out a full month and a half before we played, yeah. it's like. You're not even like on the day of checking. Like, did we get to 399, no, 400? Dude. Yeah, it's like, dude, it's, no, dude, we're done. We, yeah, yeah it's, that was, that was yeah. crazy. So everything's been going great. So yeah, hopefully dude. it continues. It, you know, I just got to stay on top of it, stay committed. Hell yeah. That's For really people it. who've made it this far and want to help things continue to go great. Yeah. Where can they find you? Where can they find the bands? What should they Everywhere. Look up? We're on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, Yuka's got a big ass YouTube channel. Um, Instagram is really what does well for both of my bands. Mm-hmm. So follow us on Instagram. That's like the. What is like Euclid's Instagram and what is Shape Throwers? Yeah, probably a good idea. I should tell people what it is. It's a. Uh, I, okay. I refuse to believe that anyone who made it this far can't find Euclid on Instagram without me fucking telling you what their e- ad is. Yeah. But I, it, it does feel right to help oh, you get there. Yes. But also, um, yeah, I have that same dilemma. Like, dude, if you made it this far and you can't fucking figure out what my Instagram is, like, go fuck you. I don't yeah. want you to be a part dude, of this. The way shit works, if you type in Euclid, it's going to know what you're talking about. You know it's what in I mean? the title of the podcast you clicked on. Like, it's yeah, everything. Yeah, dude. It's for, for someone who may have somehow. <laughs> Stumbled through all that steps and that conversation. Yes. They watch the whole thing and they're like, oh, I didn't even check. Uh, it's at Euclid Official Hell yeah. for Instagram and then uh, at Shape Thrower MA Hell for yeah. Shape Thrower, both on Instagram. Hell and yeah. then the weird part, because people – so I'm glad you did ask because on Facebook, we couldn't just do Euclid because mm-hmm. there's a fucking town in Ohio called Euclid, Ohio. Fire. And they have a page. That's sick. They have a town page. What's that just, merch game? <laughs> dude, right? Yeah. So we had to make it Euclid NE okay. on, on Facebook. Uh, technically, our at on Facebook is also Euclid Official. Okay. So if you just type in at Euclid Official, it should still pop up. Yeah. But people have a, a really difficult time because they just type in Euclid and it technically doesn't pop up. Oh, it's like annoying. it's not one of like the first options. Yeah. It's Euclid and New England. Not yet. Facebook I know. will catch on. I hope so. Yeah. They will. Yeah. They'll start. Oh, They'll dude. realize you guys are bigger than a town in Ohio. <laughs> I hope. I fucking hope so, dude. That's yeah. the goal, dude. Yeah, that was definitely <laughs> rough. We spent like a long time figuring that out, but yeah. That's but funny. that's our ads. Um, um, I appreciate you fucking putting this yeah, on, dude. dude. I pre- appreciate you putting me on, dude. Appreciate you making a trip happen. Yeah, dude, it's and awesome. It's yeah, fantastic, dude. dude. I appreciate it. Push that big red button. Mm-hmm.